Hello and welcome to my watch reviews. If you're new here, my name is Mike and today we're looking at this Mercor watch that you can see in front of you now. Now, the first one I handled was the Jump Hour watch, which I did a video a while back and that became very popular. Lots of comments, lots of critique as well. Useful critique, I think. And Mercor was obviously impressed with that video. So said, would you like to review this one it's our latest model so i thought yes what the heck why not the more i see of them the more i can get a feel of the quality or the negative points of this brand so this one is well let's face it it looks like a clock on your wrist it's that very vintage regal kind of style i've actually got a mantle clock that's not dissimilar to this uh, in my house Big Roman numerals. You've got spade blued hands. A uh, nice minute track, actually. Obviously, my clock doesn't have a sub second uh, dial there, but it's very interesting. I don't think I've seen anything quite like this for some time. In this day and age of dive watches and sports watches, this is going against all of that. So it's only going to suit a certain amount of people, I think. But if this is the sort of thing that you're looking for, a dress watch with a vintage feel, um, with stonking great big Roman numerals, well, you know, definitely continue watching this review. Why not? So before we go any further, as usual, better bring in the price pretty sharpish. And in English pounds, it is a hundred and two pounds 59 pence for the version that you can see here in the picture uh, they have different versions here's one for 94 slightly different dial and hands on that one uh, you've got the same one but with a black sub dial and then you've got this salmon colored watch here it's strange to me that they would have all these different prices for different models uh, none of which look the same except for the ones in the two in the middle this one is nothing like that one so it's a bit confusing if i'm completely honest but that's the sort of money we're dealing with there's an aliexpress sale coming up very soon that'll probably be reduced further so is it going to be worth a hundred pounds let's carry on i think i'm being a bit unkind calling it a clock because it's getting all of its inspiration from a pocket watch i feel most pocket watches that i've had owned or seen tend to have roman numerals they have a sub dial and generally spaded or quite elaborate blued hands so it is a pocket watch that's been shrunk down uh for 2024 and why not you know not many people are doing that sort of thing i don't know if i'm a particular fan of the red hand i think if you're going for that classic look and trying to keep it elegant then do away with red hand and have a blued uh second hand it just doesn't really do it for me that red hand at all uh you tell me what you think of course down in the comments looking at the case from this angle it, everything is polished uh, you can see on the top i do like that uh bezel it's kind of a stepped uh feature and that does give it a bit of presence, especially from the angle you're looking at here. The crown is very generic. You could have slightly changed that a little bit. I wouldn't say an onion crown because that would be too big. Um, but then when you get to looking at the sides of the case, this is where it goes a little bit weird to me because it's vertically brushed. And uh, that doesn't make any sense, I don't think. And I don't think it's been done superbly. But again... It's a hundred pound watch, and that's what I've got to keep saying to myself. I do love the crowns that they're using with the logo. Whether it suits again this style of watch, I am not sure. I think this case should have been all polished. At the eagle eye there, of course, you can see that it's drilled lugs, but it's drilled lugs with quick release spring bars. So uh, that's a bit of a paradox as well, uh, in my view, at least. You can also see there. That it is a domed crystal and it is a sapphire crystal they've fitted into this watch too if we turn it over we have got the nice merca case back which does look like the uh, team gb uh, olympic uh, mascot but i said that in their last video but at least they're putting a design on the case back and that is what i like in particular as there's no loom on the watch i can only just go to a wrist shot Wrist is 7 inches, 18 centimetres, 
that's what it looks like on my wrist. All very nice, nice size. We'll size it up in just a moment when we go to the bench and hold the watch in the hand. Okay, here's the watch in hand under artificial light. Apologies for the reflection. We have a slightly domed crystal, so as a result, we get plenty of reflection. You can't really make out those blued hands either. The subdial on this is mother of pearl. And maybe you can just sort of see it there. There we go, look from that angle, which is quite a nice touch. The printing looks okay. I mean, look, you know, this is a what, 94 pounds watch, which is about $120. So let's just, for instance, see if it is a genuine sapphire crystal, because that's what they claim. And yes, it is. Just to confirm how this works, in case you've never seen one, this uh, Seiko Poe here hasn't got a sapphire crystal. And you can see it doesn't move the thing at all, particularly. So yes, sapphire, which is good. I uh, probably could do with a bit more AR coating. If I turn my attention to the finishing on the side, so you've got this vertical brushing you can see here, right? And around this side as well. And it looks fairly uniform, but to my trained eye, just in certain angles, it's hard, it really is hard to explain. It's kind of got, well, they're not sharp edges for a start, but it's rounded. I think that's probably the best word to use. Now, uh, this is probably done on a linishing type machine, a sanding machine, where what it's being pushed up to is soft and that gives it that sort of roundish effect, which I don't personally like. I see this in my day job, um, which is working with steel. And uh, yeah, that could have been done a little bit better, but I still liked the Mercor uh, signed crown. I think that's a really cool design. Of course, on the case back, we still have got the uh, Olympic, UK Olympic lion. <laughs> Uh, but I like the case back, at least they, they try. You can see here as well, we've got quick release spring bars on the strap. The strap is quite nice, it's very supple. Uh, it doesn't feel uh, very leather. It says genuine leather here, but that, whether that's the underside, I can't tell. You know, some of these, have, they're always, some leather traps nowadays don't really feel to me like leather, yet they are. Um, down to the buckle, well, it's just a brushed affair. No, um, I was gonna say no, branding on there, but there is, look, there we go, Merco Watch Group. So quickly uh, size it up as well, to zoom back out for that. So we'll just check the credentials. Just needed to zero my uh, vernier. So 38 mil in diameter, 12 and a half mil thick. Lug width is 20 millimeters. And if we do the lug to lug, it is, well, I'll call it 46. So it is not a bad sized watch. Of course, it's going for that vintage vibe. The sub second and the Roman numerals and the hands, all very, uh, very old worldly looking, but on a very big watch for comparison. I mean, this sort of watch would probably be a 33 diameter or something like that. So, um, right. Because we don't know what movement is inside this, they just say it's a Hanwai movement. I have wound it fully, literally fully. And I'll put it on the time grapher before we have a look inside on the microscope. So let's just see how good or bad it runs. Okay, and here we are. And what are we getting? Well, that's not a bad trace to be quite frank. We've got a little bit of a beta error and that could be tightened up. Good amplitude, fairly decent rate. There's a little bit of inconsistency. You can just see a slight wobble, but I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Um, for a nondescript movement that we don't know about as of yet, I'm guessing it might be a seagull or something in there. Um, it's not bad, especially for the money. Let's just try it dialed down, which is a very sympathetic place for it to be. That will close up the lines, which it does now look. Yeah, so there we go. We're going to get a good beat error now. I'm probably zero or what I thought. So it is remarkably accurate. It is picking up vibrations possibly from my voice, which is what those dots are there. 
Uh, let's just put it in one stress position then. So this is crown pointing down. And yeah, consistent. You know what? For 90, 94 pounds, that ain't bad at all. I was expecting it to be quite atrocious, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I'll be improved wrong. So let's uh, whack it on the microscope and have a good look at its innards. Well, I wasn't expecting to see that. Um, it's, a, it's quite an interesting movement to say the least. Extremely decorated. You know, you've got your Cote de Genève striping here, the starburst finishing on the wheels. It is all a little bit rough in its finishing in itself, if that makes sense. This it feels quite rough. I can feel it through the, through the wood here. Um, but it's decorated nicely, nevertheless. I mean, 10 out of 10 for effort. Again, when you're talking about the price point of this, how much is this movement actually worth or how much are the manufacturers buying it for? It's, I don't know, $20 and that's probably being generous. Uh, so you're getting all this machining on it. Uh, it's a shame you can't really see it. It's hidden by the case back, although I do like the case back. Um, I think it is a seagull, um, just because I've seen plenty in the past. However, there is, there'd normally be a maker's mark under the balance wheel or somewhere around here and I can't see anything personally so it's an un, unbadged nondescript movement um, but you know you can see the jewels and everything else so I think that is decent right let's flip it over and have a closer look at the dial so it is dial time and um, well I like the 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 finishing to it it's like a metallic finish um, Looking at the printing, again, the printing on all these watches that I review nowadays, I can't find any any issues with printing. I'd like to in many respects. Um, so I can critique it rather than just going, it all looks very good. Uh, but that does look good. There's a little, you might think one of these, this is just light reflection because those indices, if I can see if I can catch them, they are ever so slightly raised. It's like painted on. And uh, no, I can't really get it, can I? So they're painted on, and as a result, we're just getting some light bounce back from them. The hands themselves, while it's blued, I can't really tell you 100% whether that's thermally blued. I think it possibly is, uh, rather than anodized or something, because that would be more expensive to do than probably just heating them up. Uh, the sub seconds, well, it's not sub seconds, is it? Sub dial seconds. Uh, again, the track on that. In the milliseconds is good hand is okay yeah if you like this type of dial then uh, this watch is certainly worth considering i think really i don't think they've gone over the top with their branding merca watch and co um, it's trying to give it that little bit of um, old fashioned vibe that's what i'm certainly getting from the style of print they've put on there uh, so yeah overall pretty impressed okay the movement is back in the case and my final thoughts well it isn't going to set the world on fire this watch but it's not supposed to is it it's a very conventional looking piece very vintage inspired with the hands the sub dial and the roman numerals and if that's the look that you want then this could be a consideration i think for uh, the £94 that they want and possibly coming up in the latest sale on AliExpress it might become a little bit cheaper again you're getting quite a lot for your money your stainless steel case sapphire crystal that nice hand wound mechanical movement with all of its decoration this leather strap which I'll keep having to say is leather I can't believe in this day and age people are using faux leather yeah it's decent it's the second uh, Mercure watch that I've uh, featured on the channel the first one the jump power was very successful video uh, much to my amazement um, but that watch was very different wasn't it uh, whereas this one of course is more traditional but yeah it's it's it is good and if that's what you like then certainly this is something worth considering just while i'm on that that as well packaging so we mentioned the packaging last time this time we've got a different flag on this one it's the same type of box which I really like actually it's got this kind of waterproof zip it's very uh, stiff very durable all this tag here as well it's um, one of the better cases I've seen from any brand to be honest with you still comes with this absolutely enormous instruction book and if you need that much instructions to tell a tell the time on a watch then um, 
Well, maybe you shouldn't be using a mechanical watch. There's also a polishing cloth in there and a spring bar tool that you don't need because this doesn't have any spring bars. It's got the quick release, of course. Uh, but there you go. So that's the end of this review. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you want to see some more. Leave comments below because I read every one and I try to reply to as many as I can. And I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are on this one and this brand in general. If there's a different one of these, this, this brand's models that you'd like me to review perhaps then leave that down in the comments and i'll see if i can get hold of one and uh, make a review for you on that so thanks very much for watching i will see you very soon in the next review bye for now